Welcome to Beyond the Headlines. I'm Jeff Powers, as mentioned, with Michael Smolens, columnist for the Union Tribune. Great to have you, Michael. Thanks for having me on. So uh, courts have cleared SDSU West and Soccer City, Correct. finally, yeah. for the November ballot. Were you surprised the city attorney took that step to not only um, take the suit to the Superior mm -hmm. Court, but then appeal to the 4th District? Yeah, because we know history in California is, is pretty rare for uh, the courts to knock off a an initiative that gets enough signatures and qualifies for the ballot off the ballot before people get to vote for it. Now, there are some rare situations when things are just like blatantly unconstitutional, like the Three Californias uh, initiative, the right. statewide initiative that was right. knocked off. That was on its face, to, at least according to the courts, unconstitutional. So that didn't make it on the ballot, despite however many millions were spent to collect signatures. But uh, it wasn't as clear as this. It was a little more... Uh, obscure legal reasoning, I think, and the judges always give the benefit of the doubt that let's see if it passes and then we'll talk about the legality. So they didn't rule on the legality of these, just that the notion of preempting it, uh, they didn't go for. Councilman Scott Sherman said in an interview, a uh, television interview, that he felt city leaders were threatened by the constitutional right to vote that voters have. We are worried that the initiative process is interfering with our power as a city, because that's what we're saying. Wait a minute. I thought the voters were the city, not us. <laughs> Surprised by that comment? Um, not really, because uh, you know it was an unusual attack. Uh, as we were talking earlier, that that um, the notion of challenging something before it gets on the ballot, after it's gotten the requisite number of signatures, is pretty rare and even rare for for courts to to knock them off the ballot, which they didn't in this case. Uh, the city is threatened by a number of things. I don't know so much about the right to people's vote, but there is the the you know argument that the city attorney made that, that this actually crosses a line from what initiatives are supposed to be in terms of a legislative uh, move into administration. And, you know, it's kind of in the weeds for a lot of people, but it is a significant one. But in the larger sense, I think what they were concerned about is that here are two proposals to sort of dictate to the city what's going to happen on city property. And they, I think they're looking down the line at the Midway District where the sports arena is, where there's a lot of city property and people potentially doing initiatives there. I mean, if you look at the past initiatives, development initiatives in San Diego County, they've been on privately owned land, but they're trying to change zoning and things like that. But this now is looking at, you know, use of city property. Tailgate Park is another uh, opportunity for some people to kind of move in and try to figure that out. So that was the underlying concern. I don't know if that's a legal issue so much, but that, I think, is the long-term concern they had. Speaking of the council, you wrote a great piece recently uh, about... Uh, thank you. It was terrific, about the police review board mm -hmm. and the issues... Uh, the delays, the voters mm -hmm. passed Prop G in 2016 to create this legislative, this body that mm -hmm. would oversee um, the decisions, shootings, etc. You can talk more about it in length as your piece does. But were you surprised that this is not on the ballot in November? Well, I guess looking in retrospect, what happened, it, you, you hate to say the fix was in, but it almost seemed like the fix was in. There, there was foot dragging uh, on certain procedural aspects that basically kept this off the ballot. Now, I've been covering City Hall and politics long enough to know that sometimes that's just a matter of uh, left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing or just certain, you know, bureaucratic delays without intention. But uh, it seemed like they had enough time to, to, to work out what needed to be done in order for the council to, to actually make the determination to put it on the ballot. But it never even got to that point because there was, again, a procedural thing that they needed to do in terms of meet and confer with the uh, police union on this. But in the larger sense, it's too bad because uh, there's a lot of people in, in this region, uh, across the country, frankly, that are very concerned about police oversight uh, and, and maybe would have gotten rejected by voters. But again, is this something that, that uh, should be debated by voters and, and put on the ballot? And it wasn't. We've talked a lot about the cyclical issues in San Diego mm -hmm. and whether it's pensions or whether it's the stadium or whether it's um, my goodness, the convention center expansion or homelessness. Mm -hmm. um, we don't seem to be gaining traction on, on these issues. Um, you've covered this mm -hmm. city for a long time. It's a, it's a very broad question. Mm -hmm. Do you understand or have any inkling as to why we're, we're continuing to kind of run in place in solving our city's important mm -hmm. Issues. Well, I, I think a lot of cities run into this. Uh, I can't quite quantify that. I'm familiar with San Diego. 
It does. There is the, you know, the old saw deja vu all over again. Uh, but in some cases, they just didn't do things right. I mean, let's take a couple of things you mentioned. Uh, the convention center expansion. They went with this, uh, you know, tax on hotel rooms that, uh, that some people were saying, that's got to go to voters. They decided not to do it that way. And they're talking was, about the TMD. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. and so um, yeah. and they passed it uh, and it was overturned by the court. So that set back that effort to expand the convention center. Uh, you take the pension situation, um, you know, that, that uh, it was another initiative that, that qualified for the ballot, one overwhelmingly had almost two thirds uh, voter support. But early on, uh, the, the union's uh, legal counsels told st uh, city officials that, you know, this has to be a matter of meet and confer. You have to discuss these things because they changed the, uh, you know, the status of employment of employees. Uh, they yeah. changed their pensions. Yeah. You know, probably that would have been an impasse and gone on the ballot anyway because they were so far apart, mm. but they didn't go through that. And that's ultimately what overturned it, but they were given that warning. You wrote a piece about Carl DeMaio and Jerry Sanders maybe getting back together. Oh, they've, they, you know, they, they've said they had. I, it is, I don't want to say the political odd couple, but as we know, there's been a history of bad blood between them, but I think that few people know the pension situation like Mr. DeMaio does, to his credit. Yes. Oh, right. very much I mean, so. He really yeah. has has yeah. uh, the finger on the pulse of that. Yeah. So. Well, and he was a big driver of that. Uh, <laughs> yep. They had a difference of opinion, and they did come together on Proposition B. It, again, uh, it wasn't the merits or the legality of Proposition B that was at issue in the court ruling against the city. It was how they went about it. Housing first seems to be the the uh, predominant view these days. That that they, you know the first thing you have to do is get people in you know home or some sort of shelter, and then start dealing with the problems they have. Uh, now I know there's a lot of disagreement, and there's there's yeah. controversy over it. Now you know we had uh, touched on you had touched on the the hepatitis crisis, and that kind of changed the game a great deal, uh, and perhaps it should have, but. You know, we, we went ahead with these three large tent uh, shelters, temporary shelters, which was not part of the plan. The part of the plan was to move towards housing, more permanent housing. This has cost a lot of money, and even uh, more regrettably is that they were thinking that there would be a, a pretty good uh, stream of moving people into housing from there. I think that they mm -hmm. uh, goal after a certain period was 65% of the people there. It's been like 12%. So things don't seem to be working on out, uh, out on that level. The UT has certainly been tough on uh, Rep. Duncan Hunter. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, you wrote a piece recently about Amar Kampa Najar, his opponent, and Joe Trippi coming on board. Mm -hmm. uh, longtime Democratic strategist, mm -hmm. he worked on uh, Walter Mondale's uh, Democratic right. nomination uh, back in '84. Mm -hmm. He has worked, um, I believe, he worked on Biden's uh, campaign. What do you think Mr. Trippi brings to San Diego in this race? Uh, Amar Kampa Najar. Uh, one in the top two primary, uh, Duncan Hunter actually got 47% of the vote. Given all the the, uh, the the downside looking at him, that actually wasn't too bad. He, you know, any incumbent that doesn't get 50%, you usually figure that's that's trouble. Uh, so Kampa Najjar has a big gap to close, but he's been raising a lot of money. He's got national organizations behind him, and uh, was just endorsed by uh, former President Barack Obama. He did work in the Obama administration, kind of in a mid-level mm -hmm. uh, position in the, the Labor Department. I think the key thing was that, that uh, the, the notion that there's some thinking that obviously if he's coming on board, uh, it may not just be a paycheck. He tends to go to interesting races. So maybe they really see that uh, Amar Kampa Najjar has a shot at this district. Thanks for watching Beyond the Headlines. We'd love to hear from you. Share any comments that may have piqued your interest. Also, feel free to like, share, or subscribe to IVN San Diego or IVN.us. We'll see you next time.